now let us talk about the vesicle formation now first first of all uh, i must uh, tell you the why we need to form a vesicle why a cell need to form a vesicle inside it cell needs to form vesicle inside uh, inside it to make to to make uh, the pouch uh, in which the protein can be stored in which not only protein but different ingredients of cell like lipids or other things can be stored so normally in vesicular trafficking system what we know is to deliver a particular protein uh, to its destination point we need to have that protein we need to have the vehicle in which the protein can be stored so in this case this pouches this vesicle pouches actually giving them the area of storage uh, for those proteins so in this vesicular transport system wh what are the ingredients we need we need a per protein molecule which has to be destined so here in this case this is the red circular protein molecule here okay and not only need a protein molecule but also need a tag in the protein molecule which actually tell that uh, that where the protein has to be targeted so the tagging is uh, have to be appropriate inside this protein okay so we need a particular tag a protein with a particular tag and not only a protein with a particular tag but you also need a receptor uh, with which the tag interacts with which the protein can bind so you need the receptor in the in the membrane from where the bulge or the pinch of vesicle can be created so for example in this case what we can see we can see here it is the endoplasmic reticulum lumen in this endoplasmic reticulum lumen there are proteins which are uh, which are previously being formed the proteins are also be modified uh, via the post translation modification and by attaching different tags and the proteins are interacting with the receptor which is present in the mm, outer membrane of endoplasmic reticulum in this endoplasmic reticular membrane uh, we have receptors which are denoted with this blue colored receptors and this receptor will bind with the protein the target protein or our desired protein and then the receptor molecule have another domain which is placed in the cytosolic environment and this domain is destined to bind with different different receptor or coat proteins as we know in case of uh, in case of uh, uh, ER transport we have the cop1 protein here but sorry for for example i have uh, distinct wrong that this is for example this is the extracellular space this is not the ER lumen this is the extracellular space in this picture uh, so in this extracellular space we have proteins which has to be destined inside the cell so what we need to do we need to transfer these proteins inside the cells for doing this we have these proteins the proteins are modified already proteins are attached uh, with the receptor which is present in the uh, in the cell membrane uh, of uh, the outer layer of the cell membrane and these receptors are also having a region of cargo re uh, region for attaching the adapter protein for example in this case the adapter proteins are clathrin mediated proteins or clathrin proteins so the clathrin proteins will bind with this adapter or cargo adapter and this cargo adapter as the name suggests will also going to bind with this cargo proteins cargo proteins mean the particular types of proteins or our desired proteins the proteins which has to be destined to a particular location a proteins of our desire so it is they are the cargo proteins so cargo proteins will attach in the Uh, extracellular space and also the cargo receptor will have another binding domain for the coat proteins which is present in the cytosolic environment so the protein binds in the extracellular space and also clathrin uh, molecules bind in the uh, cytosolic environment finally it starts to uh, take that uh, cell membrane out slight a bit and finally it will it will make a pinch uh, throughout this membrane and it it will form a bulge structure like that and form a vesicle structure like that and finally uh, it will create the strain and finally it will creating strain uh, over again and again and again so not only the clathrin molecules are able to do that but also it needs a supporting molecule supporting proteins which is actually helping this uh, to to arrive this strain uh, in in a uh, huge amount and finally to to cleave this vesicle out out uh, from the cell membrane portion such uh, one type of protein is a uh, dynamin so we have the dynamin protein the cell secretes the dynamin which, which stays here in the neck of this vesicle formation forming unit uh, it will it is actually increasing the strain of uh, of forming the vesicle finally after doing the strain in much amount then the then the the vesicle bulges out from the cell membrane and we have the fully grown coated vesicle this is the clathrin coated vesicle is formed inside the vesicle we have the cargo proteins still attached with the receptor molecules 
and as long as soon as it is uh, entered in it is particular location of cytoplasm the clathrin uh, codes are being disrupted and this clathrin subunits again come and attach with uh, attach with this cargo receptor again to carry out this cycle again and again uh, via repeating procedure uh, but the, but the vesicle which is which is now naked this naked vesicle is transported it its particular location how they can be transported according to the uh, transport signal which is present in this cargo protein which is placed inside and finally it will go and dock with this de destination point and then the proteins will be released and again the receptor or the cargo receptor molecules are being uh, are being restored in its previous previous position which is the cell membrane in this case so that's how the whole process is working in circular manner